Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us as we formally announce Gary Gate as the Roy D. Simmons Jr. Head Men's Lacrosse Coach at Syracuse University. We'll begin today with an op opening remarks from John Wildhack, followed by remarks from Coach Gate, and a question and answer session with Coach Gate. Following that, John Wildhack will be available uh, for a question and answer session back at the podium. Media, please raise your hand, and we'll come around with a microphone to call on you for questions. And with that, I'll turn it over to John Wildhack. Tyler, thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate everybody who's attending. It's such a beautiful day in central New York. We should really do this outside, Tyler. Um, but uh, on behalf of Syracuse University and Syracuse Athletics, I'm extremely proud and privileged to officially introduce Gary Gate as the fifth head coach in the history of our men's lacrosse program. Gary's accomplishments in the sport have been well chronicled by many. He is universally recognized as the greatest player in the modern era. He is the Michael Jordan of lacrosse. His coaching success as an assistant at Maryland and as head coach of our women's program places him amongst the very best coaches in the sport. His knowledge and his passion for the sport of lacrosse is unrivaled. He's an innovator and a motivator. I've had the pleasure of seeing Gary lead our women's lacrosse team and since my arrival here almost five years ago. Coach Gate has a keen commitment to his student athletes, his scholars, citizens, and maximizing their individual and collective talents on the lacrosse field. Succeeding Coach Desco is a tall order for anyone. Coaching Syracuse lacrosse comes with great expectations. But Gary is more than capable of leading our men's program back to the championship level that we all covet. I look forward to working with Coach Gate, his staff, our current team, our alumni, and our fans. completely thrilled and honored to be here and there's been uh, just uh, an amazing amount of uh, support from my former teammates, friends, um, fellow players, all sorts of people have uh, just been reaching out and it's been amazing. I thought I would uh, talk a little bit about you know why I became a coach and how I became a coach. Uh, give you a little background. Uh, I don't think I've ever really talked about that when I took the women's job, but um, you know, for me personally, I, I give a lot of credit to my father who found a way to allow myself, my brothers, to play the game of lacrosse when we were young. And uh, he helped organize the first teams I've ever played on, and then he took the next step and he went out and he found the best coaches to help me develop, help me improve, and help me learn. Uh, I was very fortunate when I was uh, about 12 years old, my uh, dad found a gentleman by the name of Ron McNeil. And Ron was a Hall of Fame Canadian player. He played in the professional leagues down here in the 70s and uh, one of the all-time greats in Canada in box lacrosse. And, my dad somehow convinced them to coach a bunch of 12 year olds. Um, and it, it was the reason that, that I'm coaching today because he, what he did for a group of 12 year olds was amazing. He was a forward thinking coach. He didn't look at our age, he looked at what we could do. And then he proceeded to teach us how to play the game 
but more importantly, he taught me how to learn the game. And, and it was pretty simple. It was, you know, he explained why you did every drill. And I think that that's what got me started in thinking about how to develop as a player. Like, why is that guy scoring 10 goals? Why, why is that defender able to stop that person? And I learned back then to watch, learn, ask myself why, and then go out and practice, work hard, and get it done. And, uh, you know, a after doing that, for working with him for a couple years, I got my first coaching opportunity at the age of 15 with my twin brother, Paul. And we took on a 12-year-old team, and uh, it was quite an experience. Obviously, I utilized a lot of what I learned from Ron and, uh, you know, started doing some things a little bit different as well. And uh, that, that, you know, gave me a, a little, you know, bug to be a coach, and, and we really enjoyed it. Paul and myself, we went on to the uh, provincial championships. I think we finished second with our team. Um, and unfortunately, the next year, things got way too hectic with playing, and we were unable to coach, but it gave me that first taste. And to be honest, I didn't think that coaching would ever be a career. You know, growing up in Canada, coaching is simply a volunteer uh, position. And every coach I've ever had in Canada has been a volunteer. So it was, you know, when I was finished here at Syracuse and went down to work, uh, I moved down to Baltimore. I didn't realize that uh, I didn't even think about coaching because, again, I just wasn't really focused on it. So it was, uh, it was an amazing opportunity when uh, Cindy Timshaw uh, called and said, would you be interested in, in coaching women's lacrosse at the University of Maryland? And uh, I hadn't thought about coaching, like I said, at all. And then sure enough, I said, you know what? I just had a, a baby girl a month ago. This is something I would definitely be willing to try. And uh, I took an approach using what I learned uh, as a 12-year-old. I, uh, I started coaching with the idea of teaching and explaining why you do things and creating new ways in the women's game to improve whether it was stick work, dodging, I, I, was, I used my ability to break down the game and the skills and teach it to the young ladies. And um, fortunately, those young ladies had uh, amazing success. So that, that really got me hooked into being a coach. And from there, I knew I wanted to be a coach. And uh, I truly loved it. Um, you know, over the years, uh, I've drawn a ton from all the coaches I had, and, and certainly one of the greatest that I've, I've ever had is Roy Simmons Jr., along with John Desco, um, great mentors, great friends. And, you know, coming to Syracuse, they taught me an incredible amount about how to build a team, a championship team. And that's what I think I pulled away uh, from Syracuse the most in the coaching world was you need to build chemistry, you need to have, you need to know your players, and you need to create a family atmosphere. And when, it, when you, all those things come together, you can almost put in any X and a, X's and O's, but you'll come out on top if everybody works as one team, one unit. And, and that was an invaluable lesson uh, from Syracuse. Roy, John, uh, Roy Three was there. And I know Leland was there back when I, I played. And they've all had impacts uh, on that. And uh, that is definitely uh, you know, one of the things that I want to bring to this program is, is heighten the level of, of chemistry and, and really make the uh, program uh,
take it to the next level on the offensive end and really create that chemistry uh, like I remember it being, where, you know, in the practice, uh, guys were experimenting, trying things so that they could use them in a game. But they were things that were unique, never been done before type plays. And I'm certainly thrilled to have that opportunity to try and bring that back uh, to the program and, and create a real buzz around the way Syracuse plays again. And uh, that's definitely going to be one of my, my big focuses. Um, it's, um, it's important that I, uh, I think that I state that, you know, this is an amazing opportunity. You know, I, I, some people have asked, well, why do you think the men's position is better than the women's position? And to be honest, um, it's, it's not better. It's just something that I have wanted to do. And it, I've had opportunities in the past, and I've stayed with the women's game. I had opportunities to move and go to the men's side, but I truly believe that my value at the time was on the women's side. But as, as time moves along, you turn down opportunities, you uh, think good thoughts, you work hard, and an opportunity like this comes along at the right time. And to be able to come back here and coach at Syracuse is certainly a dream come true. It, it was a dream to come back and coach the women, but now to have that opportunity to be on the men's side is unbelievable. And I uh, truly thank uh, John, uh, John Desco, uh, all of the coaching staff uh, on the men's team. I gotta thank all my staff and support people on the women's side, uh, Caitlin DeFelice and Sydney Preca, Jason Gebhardt, um, have been spectacular. Uh, they, they really, um, have made my job easy. Chelsea Lavelle is our director of ops, been amazing. And we just uh, look to continue that, except one story up. Um, we'll continue to support and work with the women's program. I will give them whatever they need, whatever I can do to help, I'll be there for them. And I look forward uh, to the day when we both can raise the national championship. And uh, hopefully that will be very soon. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. To be honest, I really haven't. I, you know, I get dialed in, I'm focused. I, I love my job, I love coaching with the, the young ladies. Um, they've been incredible. And so I really haven't spent any time thinking about it. You know, it wasn't until it actually happened that I, you know, my head started spinning and I had to try and figure out, you know, is this the right move? And of course, you know, it was an instant yes for me but you know, we'll make sure that, that we find someone good for the women to help keep that program where, where it is and, and win their first national championship. Well, he's already been a tremendous help. He's, he's reached out uh, two or three times already to say, you know, come player updates, don't forget about this player, I got this player going. So he's been tremendous in that way. And before the press conference, he called me and, uh, you know, said I, he had an appointment, but he wished he was here and that um, whatever I needed, he's willing to help. And we're, we've already set up a meeting to sit down and talk about the players and his opinions and 
and get his input. And I certainly told him that you're welcome to come out to any practice. You know, an extra set of eyes never hurts. And enjoy enjoy watching. Say hi to the kids anytime he wants. And uh, you know, I think that's important because you know he's been such an incredible champion for this program, and he deserves that. And uh, you know, I'm sure we'll have opportunities in the near future to honor his greatness and what he's done here. Thank you. just amazing you know um, I, I do have you know some experience on the men's side but it's it's mostly been international and professionally but um, what I love about my life and the opportunities I've had the chance to coach in almost every style of the game box field uh, we're now doing Olympic six on sixes and I've worked with the Canadian national team on the men's side, the women's side. Um, so I've had a lot of experiences with every style of play, and I think that's going to really help me. And that's going to be a big key, I think, into being creative and trying to evaluate the players and come up with a, a style of play that will allow us to hopefully bring back 20,000 in the dome to come watch us play. So it'll be between style and flair, but always has to have substance and success. And I think that's one of the things uh, back in the golden era, you didn't see very many missed behind the backs. You didn't see very many missed trick plays. It's because they were vetted in practice till they could, we all knew we could do it in a game. So you didn't see many mistakes just doing what you did. It was well rehearsed, well practiced, long before we ever got to the game. And that, we'll use that same strategy with the, the team this year. Watching, watching the men's games, it is true that um, the talent pool has grown dramatically at the high school level. And it, it unfortunately, it hasn't grown on the men's side. Um, on the counterpart side, when I started coaching women, I think there was 30 Division I teams, and now we're at 130. So the growth has been tremendous. Um, but with that said, I think uh, – Moving the recruiting date back to September 1 of the junior year will help us. I think it'll take away a lot of the guesswork. And I think there's still um, opportunity to find the best players now that you wait till their junior year. It's much easier to identify a top player as they've matured a little bit physically and as a player. Um, so. I think the other key will be to, to strategize our recruiting and make sure that we're recruiting for a specific position, specific players. And uh, I think one of my focuses is to, is to be really targeted on the recruiting and, and maybe reduce the size of the classes a little bit, um, but just make sure we get the top kids in each position. I was here when there was an opportunity. I'm not going to name schools because uh, they've hired great coaches and, and moved forward and found the right coaches for their programs. But um, there were opportunities, and, and it, it was an easy decision for me. Um, 
you know, the last time I was here, my daughter was about to come in, and I, I made the commitment to her to coach her, and I did, and I stayed, and I love Syracuse. So glad I'm still here, or this opportunity may have never come. Yeah, we're, we're getting close. We, we should have some staff named in the next couple of days, I would hope. So we're working uh, very quickly, and I think that's important. Uh, I know uh, Pat's out on the road right now. He's uh, watching kids, so he's well working, doing his job, which is awesome. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll you know, fill in the staff in the next few days. Amazingly, uh, I've done a lot already. I've gotten up to speed with uh, the recruits, the players. Um, so now it's it's back to recruiting. It's going to be the focus for the summer. You know, I'll reach out to I, I reached out to the team in a Zoom, uh, introduced myself. Well, you know, gave them a little a, a little blurb on what we're looking to do, and then. Uh, I'll follow up with them individually over the summer, spend some time on a Zoom or a call or FaceTime or something, get to know them while we're out there recruiting and, and finding that next group of uh, amazing players. So that's kind of what the summer is. The, the, the hard parts, I had a schedule all set to go, and now i got to develop a completely different one. and. Uh, you know, I'll be still doing some things on the women's side because I've made some commitments. Um, but I'm hoping that we get a new coach in here and they can help me out on some of my commitments on the women's side. Well, well, I think going back to my playing days, John, you know, he was, you know, very, uh, he was the structure, the backbone of our program. You know, uh, Coach Simmons was amazing. He was spiritual. He was uh, unique. He was different. But John really dialed in the game and what we needed to do to have success. And I think it made me realize that you have to be able to do both and teach both the game and then take the other side that uh, Coach Simmons always did, uh, you know, from developing talent to getting you to feel good about yourself to giving you the confidence to go out and make plays. So, John, he's also been a great support while I've been here as a women's coach. And to, to be able to sit down with them and navigate the waters here when I first took over was amazing. Uh, we've spent a lot of time over the years together um, socially. Uh, our, we're, we're good friends. Our wives are good friends. And we've had a lot of uh, fun activities and done a lot of fun stuff. And just being around them gives you an opportunity of, you know, I'm pretty calm, but he's, he's really become a very calm coach and, and collective, and he really thinks about everything, and I think I've learned a lot uh, from him about that. When I, when I took the job on the women's side, you know, the job was to be a top five team and win a national championship. Well, I, I got half of it right. <laughs> we were consistently in the top five. Unfortunately, we, we got to the game three times but didn't get it done. And I, I you know, there's one thing I wish I had a redo. It would be, you know, one more time, one more shot. But 
that's the way it goes, and, and I understand that. Um, the pressure on the men's side, it's a pressure I put on myself all the time. Any coaching job I've ever taken, the goal's been the same, is to, to win the championship, and I've been very fortunate that uh, I've been successful a lot of times, but it, it's really, it's really easy when that's what your life's about, and that's what I'm focused on, so is building team to be successful, and I, I don't really put much pressure on it. Number one thing that I always do is, is I truly start to believe it, and then I start convincing the team that it's certainly capable, and I get them to believe that they can do it every single year. So I think that's uh, always been one of my keys is the belief in how much I care about it and passing that on to the young players. There's, there's certainly been, you know, when to dodge, what type of dodge, you know, on the professional side with the men international. Um, I remember working with uh, Mark Matthews, a big tall player for Team Canada, and, and he's uh, such an amazing player. I had him when he was a bit younger, and I'm like, why don't you try this move, a little underneath move, because, you know, you're strong left, just bait him, make that move, and, and he did. And, you know, he was one of the, the big reasons why uh, I think it was 2014 Canada won the World Championship. So, and on the women's side, you know, there's been a multitude of players that I've been fortunate enough to coach. And it's not about teaching one skill; it's about trying to teach them all the skills. And I think that that'll be the same philosophy with these guys. If if you can do this, then you should be able to do that. Or if you can do that, then you need to learn this. And really provide a, a wide array of options. Uh, I've found over the years that most players tend to do the same things over and over again. But I think the truly great players are the ones that change it in the situation. You know, like people have a habit of shooting top right. Well, you know, overhand. And you'll see that shot 60, 70% of the time out of that player. But I think the, the really great goal scorers shoot anyway, and they take what's given to them. And they may shoot underhand, behind the back, they switch hands, whatever it is, there's not really a consistency. So the goalies can't guess or bait or do all that. So I think uh, we'll be teaching these kids that there's a lot of options, trying to break habits and, and really help develop some of the next great players. I think, you know, our administration will find the best fit for the program to lead it and, and allow them to continue as a top five program and compete for national championships. I have confidence in that. I know there's a lot of support for the alums. I certainly love my alums and support them, but uh, know that it'll be the decision of the administration. I think that's, realistically, that's the only thing that made it easy, was the fact that I could stay on campus. I can, you know, continue having relationships with the, the young players on the women's team and helping them as much as I possibly can. Whereas if I had to leave and go somewhere else, it, it may have been a different de decision. But certainly, you know, it may have been a decision like I've had in the past where I've turned it down and said, no, I'm going to stay with the, the, the ladies of Syracuse because I love Syracuse. And, you know, it made it easy when it happened here.
was certainly uh, after you know our championship win, um, and I think it was you know just after uh, John uh, had decided his retirement, and then I was called, and and that's when I found out everything. You know, it's his opportunity. It was it wasn't that long ago. It was after in decision. Uh, it was a you know nice chat with John and we, we decided and he asked and I said absolutely it didn't take me more than about two seconds and uh, then it was done. Well I can tell you a story uh, about coming back here Dr. Gross, the previous athletic director here that hired me for the women's program, had uh, sent Matt Palem out when I was living in Denver coaching the Colorado Mammoth. And he was asking me if I'd be interested in, in coming back to coach the women's team. And I told him, you know, it's awful cold there. I don't know if I can handle that. And I said, I'm not interested. And. Uh, you know, what drew me back was a year later, he sent Matt Palem out again. And he called me and he said, I, I remember it very well, I was uh, laying in a pool in, in on a corporate retreat for Cronky Sports down in uh, Mexico with all our sponsors. And uh, he called and I was floating in the pool and he said, I need to talk to you right now, do you have a minute? I, Don't say no. That's all he said, don't say no. And what it really came down to was, you know, I, I looked at the people, the, the area I lived in in Colorado, and it was pretty flashy. And uh, I think my daughter, going into eighth grade, she uh, came to me and said, Dad, Dad, I want a Louis Vuitton bag. And I said, what? I said, you're not even in eighth grade yet. We have it. All my friends have them, and that's that was one of those little things, magic moments, that I was thinking about when Daryl called. It was, you know what I love about Syracuse, the people. Absolutely, the people are down to earth. You know, it's, it's a blue collar community, the way I grew up, and it, it felt like home with the people. So that's the reason. That I came back. Love the love the university, and I love the people in the community. That's why I'm still here. Good afternoon, Lindsay. It was John's decision, and it was, as John said, we had multiple discussions, and those were very, you know, very, very substantive discussions and, in, in, uh, you know, very uh, cordial discussions. And then John came to the decision to the time was right for him to retire. And once we knew that, um, you know, I engaged with uh, Jamie Mulliner, who's a sport administrator for lacrosse, Herm Fraser, who's our deputy AD, senior deputy AD, chief of staff. Um, and there were two alums uh, who played lacrosse here. I'm not going to name their names, who had tremendous respect for their knowledge of the sport. I reached out to them. There was, there was, so we came up with a very, very short list. Obviously, Gary was, was that, and then we vetted that you know, carefully, and it became quite clear to me is, is the best person to lead our men's program was someone who's already here, and Coach Gay. Uh, and, and the charge was not, let's, let's find it wasn't, let's find the best alum to be our coach. Let's identify the best person to be our head coach. And clearly, that's Gary. 
Likewise, Nico. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, again, I think his, his credentials are unmatched, as, as I recited at the beginning. And, you know, it became pretty clear, and, and it didn't take a long time for, for me to come to the decision um, that, I, that the best person to lead this program was Gary. So, you know, it moved, it moved quickly, um, and it was clear to me that, you know, Gary was and is the best candidate, the best person to do this. And it's the right time and the fact that he knows our culture, the Syracuse culture, he mentioned it in terms of the community, right? Blue collar people down to earth, an association with our program, the success that he's had here. I mean, those are, you know, those are clear cut advantages. I just think the connectivity he has with his team, you know, his, his connectivity, he really knows how to communicate. He knows how to connect with his team. He knows how to, how to manage. He knows the right words at the right time. It was, it was actually, it was, it was really, it was a great experience for me to be with the team, you know, in Maryland for the national semifinals of the championship game and, you know, four days together and we spent a lot of time together and just, Again, when you get to see how somebody, you know, how somebody leads their program and the way that they do it, the involvement of their assistant coaches, the engagement with the players, uh, parents of players, you know, all that I just found very, very impressive. And then obviously his, his success, you know, the record speaks for itself. Brent, how are you? Well, because you're right, the, there's there's clearly more talent than there's ever been, right? And that talent is just not in the three pockets. It used to be primarily Central New York, you know, the Baltimore area, and Long Island. You know, now it's national, right? You look at our roster, kids that we have, and look at programs that have launched. To me, I think this is an advantage for us because we're the best program in the history of the sport with 11 national championships. You know, we've got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of All-Americans. So I look at that as a recruiting advantage, frankly. And I look at how we resource the sport, and I look at our facilities. Is you know, Ensley, Wool Field, the Dome, Syracuse Education, Academics. I think we can offer a recruit either men's lacrosse or women's lacrosse. We can offer them an unparalleled experience. So yes, you know, there are expectations. Let's embrace those expectations and let's leverage the success and leverage the attributes that we have. And, and to do exactly that is to build championship programs for both men's and women's lacrosse. You know, the goal, and Gary and I have talked about it, I said, you know, I want Memorial Day weekend to be really crazy. I, you know, I, want, I want to be hopping from you know, fri Friday to women's semis, to Saturday to men's, to Sunday to women's championship. To, I want my Memorial Day weekend selfishly, and I want it for all of our fans. You know, I want it to be consumed with lacrosse. Yeah, Mary, we're in the process of, again, you know, vetting candidates, potential candidates. Uh, Kim Keener Kirkpatrick is the sport administrator for women's lacrosse. Uh, Kim is leading our search efforts. And again, uh, I'm not going to give you a specific timetable. We want to move with alacrity at the same time as we want to be very, very thorough in our research of, of potential candidates. Um, I will tell you that you know, candidates that have emerged to date uh, are outstanding. You know, so wherever, whatever decision we make, we will have a championship caliber coach that leads our women's program.
Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tyler.